Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. The songwriter says, yes, he is good. We greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Sunday, before we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving, we welcome you this morning to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church, I am Reverend Monique Summers, the pastor at St. Luke, and we're just delighted that you have decided to join us this Sunday morning for worship service. Now, our worship service on today will consist of prayer and scripture and the proclamation of the word. It is our prayer. It is our desire that something will be said or done in this worship experience this morning that will cause you to have a closer walk with the Lord. And for those who may be watching who do not know the Lord Jesus and have received him as your Lord and Savior, that today will be the decision-making day for you, that you will choose to give Christ your life. Now, before we go into our worship experience, I would like to give you the opportunity for those who are watching who would like to give a donation or an offering to this ministry. You have three ways of doing that. We do have Givelify, that is St. Luke, S-T-L-U-K-E-A-M-E Church, Opelika. Our cash app is St. Luke Opelika, that's S-T-L-U-K-E-O-P-E-L-I-K-A. And also by mail, P.O. Box 4138, Opelika, Alabama, 36803. Now, we're ready this morning and hope that your hearts and minds are ready also to just praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us now bow in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, oh God, we just come before you this morning with a heart of thanksgiving. Coming before you, dear Heavenly Father, as we look back over our lives. We see that if it had not been for you who was on our side, we would cry out, where would we be? But God, because you have stood with us down through the years and from generation to generation, we come this morning, dear Heavenly Father, with a heart of thanksgiving. We realize your word says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So not only do we come with a heart of thanksgiving, but we come to praise your holy and your righteous name. Oh God, we thank you for your forgiving spirit. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing that we still have a need. And so this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we simply ask that you forgive us of our shortcomings and our wrongdoings and our sin. And God, as you forgive us, we ask that you touch our hearts and give us that same forgiving spirit that we may forgive others their trespasses that they commit against us. And now, oh God, we come to tell you thank you. Thank you for life being as good as it is. Oh God, thank you for a reasonable portion of our help and our strength this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come now not with a selfish prayer, but praying for those who are less fortunate than us, praying for those without food, clothing, or shelter, praying for those who are sick in their homes and in hospitals and even in nursing homes. God, praying for those who are homeless this morning, 
Then, oh God, we're praying for those of us who life is better, a little bit better than those who we claim are less fortunate than us. Touch our hearts. Cause us to have a giving spirit that we would help our brother and our sister. Let us not ask the question, who is my brother? Or am I my brother keeper? Let us come to the realization this morning that we are our brothers and sisters keepers. Then, oh God, we continue to pray for leadership. God, from the White House down to our own houses. We pray for leadership in the church house, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for our leaders here in the 9th Episcopal District. Bishop Harry L. C. Wright and the Reverend Sharita Moon C. Wright our supervisor. Thanking you, God, for our presiding elders, all presiding elders. And then, oh God, thanking you particularly for Reverend Dr. Letitia Watford, who has continued to lead us with the spirit of resiliency. Oh God, not only in the African Methodist Episcopal Church do we give you praise, but we praise you for all clergy who are working in the vineyard. Oh God, we thank you this morning for the power of the universal church, for every church, every denomination that is gathered in your name, oh God. We thank you for the work of the kingdom that is being done. Then, oh God, we pray for the worship service today. We pray that something will be said or done that will cause men to draw closer to you and into a closer relationship with you. And for those who don't know you this morning, and the pardon of their sin, that this will be the decision-making day for them, that they will come running, I yield, I yield. I cannot hold out any longer. And so, oh God, we thank you now in advance for what we're about to witness. We thank you in advance, oh Lord, for the things that we're about to hear. For you say, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? And so I thank you right now, Lord, for a sent word, O oh God. Allow me to decrease and so that you may increase and that the people will hear and see you, O oh God. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray and ask these blessings. And every believer ought to say, Amen. Amen and amen. This morning, as we continue to give God praise for all the wonderful things that he has done, we want to bring our attention to scripture reading found in 1 Thessalonians, the 12th chapter. I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. Verses 12 through 18. And it reads thusly, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 18. Our key verse being verse number 18. I'll be reading the New King James Version of the text. And it reads thusly. And we urge you, brethren, to consider those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them highly in love for their work's sakes. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, to warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all men, and see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I want to read that again. Rejoice always. Pray 
without ceasing. And everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And this morning, just for a few moments, we want to center our attention on the topic, thankfulness is gratitude for blessings. We want to center on that key word, thankfulness. And so let us pray once again. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you as humble as I know how, simply asking you to let the words of my mouth and the meditation from my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You're my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. It is in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus that I pray and ask these blessings. And every believer said, amen. Again, this morning, we center our attention on our scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, looking primarily at verse number 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and for me. I looked at this scripture also in the Amplified Version. And it read together with verse 16 and 17, said, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer in every situation, no matter what the circumstance. Be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you and I in Christ Jesus. But then the message Bible said it this way, be cheerful, no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God, no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. So don't quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things and hold fast what is good and abstain from every form of evil. This morning, I thought as we embark upon Thanksgiving, a time that we set aside to gather with loved ones, although this year we may just be gathering with the uh, immediate family that's in our own household. But it's a time where we reflect and give thanks to God, not just for the food and the fellowship, but that we pause on this day, as we should every day, to give God thanks. Uh, the scripture said, uh, be cheerful no matter when and pray all the time and thanking God no matter what happens. Uh, that we rejoice always and delight in our faith, uh, unceasingly in prayer and in every situation, no matter what the circumstance may be, that we give thanks. And I know in a season where we've watched COVID, the virus 19, COVID 19 seem to have impacted the entire world. Uh, when people have lost lives, thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And in spite of all that we have witnessed with the pandemic, we look to the left and right and see gun violence. Uh, we look and see. Uh, political, uh, I would call it outrage. Uh, we see every kind of situation. We see sickness in other areas other than the virus. And it may seem that we find it hard to find a reason to express Thanksgiving. And so I thought today, before we assemble ourselves again, if it be the Lord's will, that we would look at reasons why we, as people, as the creation of God, should give thanksgiving. How should we express our thanks to a God who has looked beyond fault and still granted us our needs? And so this morning, we want to consider the scripture that says, thank God no matter what. 
in all situations, no matter what the circumstance, that we would offer him a continual praise. We want to give him thanks in all things, realizing this is the will of God. And so I thought I would remind us, because sometimes we get blurred vision and don't know what to thank God for because we're so overwhelmed by our situation. But I just stopped by this morning to remind the church uh, that we can still give thanks. We can, ex we can still express our gratitude. And one of the points I want to deliver to us this morning, the first one being uh, found in John, the sixth chapter, verses 11 through 23, when Jesus fed the 5,000, listen at the reading of the text. He was thankful for the food that he was about to distribute. The Bible says, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. But look at what Jesus does. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to them, to the disciples, and then the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and fill the 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves. That is what was left over by those who had eaten. And then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said that this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. I stopped by to tell the church, that every time we get ready to partake uh, of our food uh, and our daily portion that the Lord has provided, we ought to pause and give thanks to God Almighty. It said then Jesus, he took the loaves and when he had given thanks. So in other words, before he began to feed the 5,000, with what looked like uh, it would not be enough. The Bible says that he began first uh, to give thanks uh, unto the Lord. And after he had given thanks, uh, he gave to his disciples and his disciples gave to those 5,000 plus men who were sitting in their presence. I stopped by to remind the church that there is power in thanksgiving for it is when jesus uh, gave thanks to god with the little uh, that was in his hand that he was able to feed the five thousand with fragments left over i want to suggest to us i want to even submit to us this morning that perhaps uh, if you and i would stop looking at what's in our hand but start looking up toward heaven. For I know uh, the Bible says, uh, and the songwriter wrote, Father, uh, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Lord, if you withdraw thyself from me, oh, where shall I go? I want to submit this morning uh, that the little, uh, it can become much uh, when we place it uh, in the master's hand stop by this morning as we march into the thanksgiving season uh, to remind the people uh, quit looking at what you got uh, and start looking at who your supplier is i dare you uh, to give god thanks uh, for what you have uh, and see won't he multiply uh, what's in your hand, uh, and then uh, it was more uh, even left over. But the Bible says uh, that there were fragments uh, 
that was remaining. Uh, and so uh, they were able to fill uh, 12 baskets. Uh, and so I say to us on today, uh, what he did way back then, uh, God is the same God uh, today and forevermore. I dare you to give thanks to God for what you do have. You may not have turkey and ham, but thank God for chicken. You may not have all the vegetables you want to serve, but thank God for that which you do have. And when you begin to thank God, watch him come in and begin to multiply. I am a living witness that I know he'll make a way out of no way. And so I say to the church this morning that we ought to express thanksgiving every time we get ready to serve food before we begin to disperse it. We ought to look toward heaven and give God all the praise and all the glory and thank him for what he's about to do in your life and in my life. The next point I want to submit to us is not only should we be thankful for food and food being multiplied and even thanking God for leftovers, but we ought to thank God for wisdom. I'm reminded in the second chapter of Daniel that God revealed Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The Bible says uh, now in the second year, of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, that he had a dream. In fact, the Bible said he had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to all the magicians, to all the astronomers, to all the sorcerers and all the Chaldeans to tell him the dreams so that they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. And the Chaldean spoke to him in Aaron, saying, O king, live forever. If you'll tell your servants the dream, we'll give the interpretation. But the king said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not know the dream and cannot tell me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be cut to pieces and your horses shall be made to heat. However, if you tell me the dream and the interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, honor, and not only honor, but great honor. Therefore, tell me the interpretation of the dream. I stopped by to tell you that those men could not uh, tell the Nebuchadnezzar, what his dream was, nor the interpretation. And so it was when the news uh, reached Daniel. Daniel uh, made a request to go before the king. And he asked that he would be able to make a decision and tell the king what his dream was. And so Daniel said to the king uh, to give him time that he might interpret the dream. Good God Almighty. But this is where I pause to tell us that we ought to learn how to give God uh, thanks for uh, wisdom uh, that can only come from above. So Daniel didn't fear the king, but he feared his God. And the Bible lets us know that the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. It is the beginning of wisdom. But the Bible says that after Daniel asked for time, Daniel went into his house and he made it known to his companions that they might seek the mercies of God. When you seek the mercies of God, you're asking God uh, to stop the punishment. I know the king has issued a decree, but Daniel went before God. He told his friends to seek the mercies of God, of heaven concerning the secret so that Daniel and his companions would not perish with the rest of the wise men. And the Bible says then the secret, when, uh, when he sought the Lord, 
and, and petition him for mercy. Verse 19 says, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the, the God of heaven. And he said these words in verse 23. I thank you and praise you, O God of my father, for you have given me wisdom and might, and you have made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. I stopped by just to ask the church, uh, when's the last time uh, you told God thank you uh, for giving you divine uh, revelation? When's the last time uh, in this season of Thanksgiving uh, when the Bible says that, that every day uh, is a day of Thanksgiving, uh, when it's hard uh, for us to find reason uh, to thank God? Uh, Daniel paused uh, and he told God, uh, I thank you uh, for you have given me wisdom uh, and you have given me might uh, and you have revealed to me uh, the king's dream. Uh, stop by to tell the church uh, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, look back over your life uh, and even in this past year uh, and see, can't you find uh, a circumstance, uh, a situation, uh, a decision that you had to make uh, and you knew that if God didn't give it to you, uh, that you would make the wrong decision. Uh, but just uh, in the nick of time, uh, God gave you uh, the revelation uh, as he did with Daniel. Uh, but the question today is, uh, did you stop? Uh, did you pause? Uh, did you offer up a prayer of thanksgiving? Uh, as Daniel said, Lord, I thank you for you have given me wisdom and you have given me might. So as we, we embark upon thanksgiving, let us remember to thank God for the food that he has provided and for the leftover that we had after the meal. Let us thank God uh, that he gives uh, divine wisdom. And then uh, I want to submit to us in 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter around about uh, verse 2 through 4. We find that Paul uh, writes these words. Uh, he began to thank God uh, for converts. Uh, he said, we that give thanks to God always for you, all making mention of you in our praise, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor, and love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of our Lord, our Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election. And in verse 6, he said, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. Paul, as he pens the epistle, the first Thessalonians. Verse chapter one, verse two, he said, I pause to give thanks to God for all of you. When's the last time that you and I paused, took our mind off of ourselves, took our mind off of our problems, took our minds off of our situation? and began uh, to look at uh, the converts uh, and pause uh, just to say words like this. Uh, oh God, uh, we give thanks to you always uh, for you all making mention of you in our praise, remembering you without ceasing for your work of faith, labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of our Father, when's the last time uh, 
you prayed a prayer uh, of thanksgiving uh, and it wasn't for food uh, it wasn't for wisdom uh, but it was for God uh, saving some folks uh, it was because God uh, converted some folks uh, and when they got converted uh, they kept on working their faith uh, they kept on laboring in love uh, they kept on holding on to patience and hope uh, when's the last time uh, you and I said uh, that we would thank God uh, for saving our household, uh, that we paused to thank God uh, that our next door neighbor uh, was walking in righteousness. Uh, when's the last time uh, that we paused to tell God, thank you. Thank you for converts. Thank you for Christians. Uh, thank you for co-workers who are saved uh, and walking uh, in the righteousness of God. Paul said, we give thanks. Another scripture said, I, my heart desire is that Israel might be saved. When's the last time you told God thank you just because he saved somebody, somebody you've been praying for, somebody who came and, and we said turned over a new leaf in life. When's the last time that we paused and said, today, I'm praying for converts. I'm praying that they stay saved. I'm staying, praying that they stay walking in the righteousness of God. I'm praying that they keep exemplifying godly principles. And so this Thanksgiving, as you thank him for food, as you thank him for wisdom, you ought to thank God for new converts being added to the body of Christ. And for them becoming followers and having received the word. And they're able to bear some things because if we keep reading on down, he said, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, that you became examples to all Macedonians. Is anybody thanking God? Because you say, and right in your sphere of influence, you are that example. Let us begin to offer thanks to God for converts, for wisdom, for food. And then I want to submit to us, you ought to pause and tell God, thank you for being a prayer answering God. John, the 11th chapter, verse 41 being the key verse, we find that Lazarus is raised from the dead. The Bible says in verse 38, I'll back it up first, uh, John the 11th chapter. Then Jesus again groaning in himself. He came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench. For he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, uh, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face uh, was wrapped up with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. I stopped by this morning to just tell the church uh, that we ought to thank God uh, for being a prayer answering God. No doubt uh, Lazarus' sisters uh, had prayed, uh, prayed for him. Uh, and so when Jesus shows up on the scene, uh, the Bible says that she said, Lord, by now, uh, there is a stench uh, 
for he's been dead uh, for four days. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, I stopped by uh, to ask the church, uh, when's the last time uh, you told God thank you? Uh, and even though your situation uh, was a dead end situation, uh, it's been now uh, four days uh, and they believed uh, after the third day, uh, the spirit would be released from the body. Uh, so surely uh, on the fourth day, uh, he was dead, uh, as dead can be. Uh, but Jesus showed up uh, and he began uh, to thank God uh, for uh, raising Lazarus uh, before he raised him. Uh, he began to thank God uh, for being a prayer answering God uh, that people uh, standing around uh, just might believe uh, when's the last time uh, you told God thank you uh, for your trial, uh, for your tribulation, uh, for your dead end uh, situation, uh, when's the last time uh, you said God uh, with this situation uh, is gonna bring you some glory uh, and so the Bible says uh, that Jesus thank God uh, before he called Lazarus forth, uh, but he already knew uh, what the power of God could do. Uh, he said, but I say this uh, so that these uh, may believe uh, that you sent me. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, we ought to learn uh, how to thank God uh, on the good days, uh, on the bad days uh, in life. Uh, and even in death, uh, good God Almighty, uh, when he thanked God, uh, the Bible says uh, he opened his mouth uh, and he called uh, Lazarus forth uh, with a loud voice. Uh, he said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, and so I stopped by uh, to tell the church uh, that God has done uh, the miraculous in your life uh, and the miraculous in my life. Uh, did you stop uh, to tell him thank you uh, for the Bible says uh, in all things, uh, in all situations uh, that we ought to thank God uh, and Jesus thanked him uh, for being a prayer answering God uh, before the prayer was answered. Uh, we ought to learn uh, how to thank God uh, in advance uh, as I get ready to close. Uh, I want to submit to you uh, that we uh, ought to thank God uh, for changed lives. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, First Thessalonians, uh, second chapter, uh, verse number 13. Uh, Paul writes these words uh, for this reason. We also thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it and not as a word from me, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God which are in Judea and in Christ Jesus. Paul again pauses uh, as he pins the epistle to the church of Thessalonica. And he says, I thank God uh, that you got uh, changed lives. Uh, not only are you saved, uh, not only are you converted, uh, but people can see uh, the change in your life. Uh, the songwriter wrote, uh, I looked at my hands, uh, my hands look new. Uh, I looked at my feet, uh, Lord, they did too. Uh, that sounds like somebody uh, with a changed life. Uh, their hands uh, are not doing the thing they used to do. Uh, their feet uh, are not going to places they used to go. Uh, and so uh, Paul says, uh, 
For this reason, uh, we also thank God uh, without ceasing uh, because you received the word of God uh, that you heard from us uh, and you became imitators. Uh, you became the role model. Uh, you became the example. Uh, you treaded the way uh, for other people. Uh, and how many of us today uh, in this season of Thanksgiving uh, can pause uh, and start thanking God uh, that lives uh, have been changed uh, so that when folks uh, who don't know you've been changed uh, because they remember the old you uh, but because you're setting an example now uh, when your name come up uh, in places that you don't know uh, somebody will open their mouth uh, and say she ain't like that no more uh, he don't do that anymore uh, they are saved uh, they are converted uh, they're living uh, a changed life and so Paul says for this reason I thank God without ceasing that you're setting examples that you're walking role models he says so every day I'm thanking God not only that you are converted but that your life has been changed I'm thanking God that you are setting the example. So in this season of Thanksgiving, let us thank God for changed lives. Let's thank God for being a prayer answering God. Thank God for the new converts. Thank God for granting us wisdom. Thank God for the food that we receive. And then the last thing uh, that I want to leave with you, it's that uh, we begin uh, to thank God uh, for salvation. Uh, Second Corinthians, uh, the ninth chapter, uh, verse uh, number 15, uh, says it this way. Uh, Thanks be to God uh, for his indescribable gift. Now, what is uh, the indescribable gift? Uh, that is the gift of salvation. Uh, that is him receiving us into uh, the kingdom of God. That is us uh, confessing with our mouth uh, and believing in our heart uh, that Jesus Christ is uh, the son of the living God. Uh, so as we celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, I know you can't describe the gift of salvation, uh, but just uh, with the resources that you have, uh, you ought to tell God, thank you uh, for saving me. Uh, you ought to say, Lord, uh, if you don't do anything else, uh, you've already uh, done enough. Uh, and so we ought to pause uh, in the season of Thanksgiving uh, and tell God, thank you, uh, not for what uh, he has done, uh, not just for food, clothing, and shelter, uh, not just for new converts, uh, not just for those setting the example, uh, not just for wisdom, uh, but we ought to thank him uh, because he saved us uh, when we wasn't worth saving. Uh, he looked beyond faults uh, and saw we still had a need, uh, and so he sent his son uh, down through uh, 42 uh, generations uh, that he might be born, uh, that he might be killed uh, and sacrificed uh, so that you and I uh, could have a right to life. Uh, this indescribable gift uh, stretched out his arms uh, on Calvary's hill. Uh, he died uh, for you and I, uh, but he didn't uh, stay dead. Uh, the Bible says uh, that this this uh, indescribable gift uh, got up uh, with all power uh, in his hands. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, so this Thanksgiving, uh, why don't you pause uh, and tell God thank you uh, for his saving grace. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, that you thought uh, that we were worth saving. Uh, and so this Thanksgiving, we pause. To tell him thank you for salvation. We thank him uh, for changed lives. Uh, we thank him uh, 
for being a prayer answering God. Uh, we thank him uh, for new converts uh, being added to the body of Christ. Uh, we thank him uh, for the wisdom uh, that he gives like he gave Daniel. Uh, we thank him uh, for being our provider uh, and providing food uh, and even left overs uh, good god almighty uh, this is the thanksgiving message uh, don't y'all know uh, that we got victory uh, if we receive salvation uh, first corinthians uh, 15 chapter uh, about the 57 verse uh, says these words uh, be thankful uh, but thanks be uh, be to God, uh, not my mama, uh, not my daddy, uh, not my brother, uh, nor my sister, uh, not my husband, uh, not family, uh, not friends, uh, but this Thanksgiving, uh, I want to say these words, uh, thanks be to God uh, who has given us the victory uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, therefore uh, I can stand before you, uh, I'm steadfast, uh, immovable, uh, always abounding uh, in the works of the Lord, uh, knowing that my labor uh, is not in vain. Uh, who am I talking to uh, when you get ready uh, to say your prayers? Uh, when you get ready uh, to offer up Thanksgiving, uh, I dare you uh, to say these words. Because uh, death uh, has been swallowed up in victory. Uh, no wonder the writer writes, uh, oh, death, uh, where is your sting? Uh, oh, Hades, uh, where is your victory uh, for the sting of death is sin uh, and the strength of sin is the law. Uh, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. When the last time you told God thank you, whether I live or whether I die, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the word of God today for the people of God. And the people of God ought to say, Amen. For God has spoken. And so let the church, we the church, say, Amen. Amen. And at this moment, we pause to extend the invitation to salvation. And you can only receive salvation except you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He came, He lived. Die, rose again, is coming back to rapture the church. And if you're not part of the body of Christ, we offer Christ to you today. And we'll begin to praise God even now for those who are listening and those who will listen even later. That salvation will come to your house, even right now. And so we rejoice and give thanks. For the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice when one soul has come to Christ. And if you're listening on today, and perhaps you say, Pastor, I just need to rededicate my life. We offer Christ to you. We pray that you'll come back into right standing with God. We offer him to you. If you receive Christ on today, I have decided to rededicate your life. Let us know by sending us a message. If you're watching by way of Facebook or just giving us a call, 706-773-4927. And we'll be glad to talk with you and walk with you in your new life with Christ. And we'll be forever thankful for every day. Hallelujah is a day of thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you on today for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you, O oh God, and believing that one will come and surrender their life unto you. We thank you that others will rededicate their life and believing you on today, O oh God, that somebody has been edified, somebody has been encouraged, somebody has been lifted up. And so we thank you for that opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard and even our mind has conceived. We'll be careful to give you all praise and all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, as I get ready to close out the worship service, I do have a report of thanksgiving to give to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. I thank God for being the pastor at this great church, historical church located in Opelika, Alabama. As some of you know who may be watching and listening and others uh, who will listen, on um, yesterday, November 21st, was my birthday. I give praise to God for 51 years of life. As my grandbaby told me last year, I said, Caleb, am I over the hill? And he looked at me and he said, no, you're just at the top of the hill. That was last year when I turned uh, 50. So this year I turned 51 and I'm scared to ask him because I know he's going to tell me now I'm officially over the hill. But I pause to tell God, thank you for being able to say that I'm over the hill in the terms of Caleb. Because others didn't live to see 51. And so I give him praise. And I thought this year, uh, as uh, I was celebrating my birthday, I had a surprise celebration on Friday night with my sister, whose birthday is on the 20th, mine is on the 21st. Didn't know, I thought I was going to her celebration and, and they were celebrating uh, my sister and myself. But in my spirit, God told me to send a request out for presents this year, not for me, but I asked them people, 100 people, I wanted to give a thousand dollar donation on today to St. Luke as uh, an offering back to God and the kingdom work that we're doing there. And I sent out 100 requests to 100 persons who I thought would sow a seed of $10 to help me strive to reach that goal. And as the day began to process through and over in the night, and even as I woke up this morning, my cash app kept bailing and going off. I received donations from $10. Some gave 20s. One person even gave 40 another $250. So I'm glad to report today that I will be making a donation on behalf of 51 years of life. Hallelujah. That I didn't want the gift for myself, but I wanted it for the church. That I'll be making a donation today in the amount of $550. And I'm believing God that more will come in. $550 will be deposited into the bank account of St. Luke on today. Why don't you put your hands together and help me celebrate God? Help me celebrate 51 years. Help me celebrate others who thought it not robbery to sow into the kingdom of God by blessing the woman of God. And so today, hallelujah, I give God praise. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. One songwriter said, I just want to thank you, Lord. Nobody else just want to thank God. I just want to thank you, Lord. I'm not a singer, but I want to give him a praise. And we give him that praise. So our benediction, and we're closing out. Thank you again for joining us on today. Let us do our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always and always giving God thanks. In Jesus name, we pray, amen. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you will join us again on next Sunday, 10 o'clock, a.m. Central Time, same place. And also on Wednesday night, we are having our leadership 
Bible study. All month long, we've been studying on leadership. We hope that you will join us. We're having a mighty good time. I'm receiving a lot of feedback. And so if you are a leader, think you're a leader, or don't know if you're a leader, I want you to call in and be blessed by the Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. God bless. We love you. Have a great day. This does end our service.